Uh, hi, my name is uh, Dong Joon Ri. I'm a sixth year PhD student in the Olong Group. Today, I'm going to present my works on creating uh, multi-scale graphene rainbows with area-specific wavelengths and spatial orientation. So to get us all on the same page, let me start by introducing some background of graphene in the context of electronics. So graphene is a single layer of carbon atoms arranged into a honeycomb lattice. Different from graphite, where sheets of carbon lattices are bonded to Van der Waals forces, graphene has a free pi electron for each carbon atom and it exhi exhibits an electron mobility about two orders of magnitude higher than graphite and two to three orders of magnitude higher than silicon, which con uh, constructs most of today's electronic devices. And in addition, graphene has high strength at low bending rigidity and thus beneficial for creating flexible electronic devices. However, graphene lacks an electronic band gap, which limits types of electronic devices that can be realized. For example, if you use the graphene for uh, transistors, it, it cannot function well because it has a low current on-off ratio, which is a measure of the turn on and off the current in the electronic circuits. So there are several methods to tune the properties of the graphene, and one method is, is to introduce a nano hole arrays. So the scanning electron microscopy here shows so-called graphene nano mesh, which is created after treating the surface of the uh, graphene or etching the surface of graphene through a rhizographic mask. And because of the level of quantum confinement, this graphene nano mesh exhibits an electronic band gap that can be tuned by the neck width of the nano mesh structure and uh, exhibits the electrifying behavior needed to create diodes. Another well-established well method is to chemically functionalize the surface of graphene. For example, upon fluorine containing plasma treatment, bonds are formed between carbon and fluorine atoms, and the bond formation changes the distribution of uh, carbon atom uh, electron, electron distribution and widens, uh, opens up the band gap that widens with the fluorine coverage. However, both these etching and functionalization methods typically damage the graphene lattice and compromise the mechanical stiffness. So out-of-plane texturing graphene has emerged as an alternative method to engineer the properties of graphene and to maintain the uh, mechanical integrity of graphene. For example, uh, out-of-plane nanostructures can be formed spontaneously uh, in the graphene spontaneously over large areas by transferring graphene on top of an elastomer sheet and relieving the stream. Uh, because of the weak interfacial adhesion between graphene and the elastomer substrate, the graphene uh, forms the delaminate couples via partial delamination from the surface. And the uh, physical properties of graphene, such as electric conductivity and the optical observance, has been shown to change as a function of the feature size and orientation. So if we if you have these uh, out-of-plane delaminated focals, it induces strain in the graphene lattice and affect the pi electron, which can change the electronic properties of graphene from a metal to semiconductor. And also, the out-of-plane texture uh, induces rehybridization between sigma and pi orbitals in graphene, which enhances the chemical reactivity of graphene uh, as a function of the local curvature. And what is unique about the delaminate buckling on top of this uh, elastomer substrate is that you can tune the property of graphene dynamically by simply stretching the, uh, 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 the elastomer substrate underlying the graphene. Uh, however, uh, delaminate graphene buckling has some limitations because uh, it, should, it, it can only form the global uniform nanotextures over the entire surface. So if you want to uh, tune the local properties of graphene, this process cannot be able to address that uh, need. Moreover, graphene typically cracks when we try to tune the properties of the textures uh, it, by stretching the substrate uh, be, uh, under a few percent tensile strain. So to address these challenges, our group have developed a so-called conformal wrinkling process using a fluoropolymer sandwich layer between the polar polymer uh, between the graphene and the polystyrene thermoplastic substrate. So this polystyrene substrate is pre-strained, and when you heat this above the glass transition temperature of the polystyrene, which is 100 degrees Celsius, 
it shrinks and compresses the graphene. So the fluorocarbon layer from the CHA3 plasma treatment maintains the conformal contact between graphene and the substrate, which creates this uh, sinusoidal periodic wrinkle structure characterized by uh, average peak to peak distance or a wrinkle wavelength lambda. So if we uh, look at the graphene wrinkles under the height map of the atomic force microscopy or AFM, we can barely distinguish where the graphene is because graphene is an, only an atom thick and also is conformally bonded to the surface. However, if we look at the color map under AFM, we, we now see the difference between the graphene region and the fluorocarbon region because graphene is uh, conductive and the fluorocarbon is insulated. So conformal graphene wrinkles allows for tuning, precise tuning of the nanostructures compared to the buckling of the graphene without the fluorocarbon that relies on the delamination of graphene from the surface at random locations. Moreover, because the wrinkle wavelength is linearly proportional to the thickness of the fluorocarbon that we deposit, we can simply tune the graphene wrinkle wavelengths from sub 100 nanometer to over microns by changing the thickness of the material that is deposit. However, the drawback of the thermoplastic Poisson system is that we can only deform the substrate at elevated temperatures uh, or the temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, which uh, dramatically limits the tunability range of the graphene geometry under a pencil strain of the substrate. So my work focused on uh, integrating this conformal wrinkling strategy into the elastomeric substrate, which uh, enables us to dynamically tune the graphene wrinkles by simply uh, mechanically stretching the substrate at room temperature. And that will allow us to tune or expanding the tunability range of the graphene properties. However, preserving the mechanical integrity of graphene remains still challenging because we cannot guarantee the mechanical robustness of the graphene fluoropolymer composite under high strains. So this is how we integrate graphene into the elastomeric system. We first prepare the pre-strained PDMS substrate, which was mechanically stretched, and apply the CHF3 plasma to form this fluoropolymer layer and transfer a monolayer CVD graphene based on the transfer method using PMMA support layers, and then relieve the strain to compress graphene and form these wrinkles which are aligned perpendicular to the strain relief direction. So these are FM images of graphene wrinkles formed with different amount of pre-strains. And what was significant was that uh, there was a pencil strain developed in the transverse direction and graphene only showed minor tears with width less than 50 nanometers. For example, if you relieve 70% pre-strain, it applies 30% pencil strain in the transverse direction which is two to three times more compared to the in intrinsic fracture strain of the CVD graphene. In contrast, if you don't have the fluoropolymer layer in between, the graphene formed delaminate buckles and the cracks, and the crack width increased with the amount of pre strain that it released. So to further investigate how the fluoropolymer mitigate the crack formation in graphene, we analyzed the Raman spectra. So before going into the actual data, let me briefly walk through the background of graphene Raman spectroscopy and what information we can get out of. So uh, we can reveal the charge doping and strain in graphene from Raman spectra that results from the uh, graphene substrate interaction based on the three characteristic features in Raman spectra. One, the correlation between G and 2D peak positions of the graphene Raman spectra two, fully half max of the G peak, and three, the intensity ratios of the Raman G and, sorry, 2D and T peak. Charge doping is characterized by decrease in fully half max of the G peak and the intensity ratio. And if you plot the relation between 2D and G peak frequencies, it's shown here as a plot, the whole doping leads to a shift in G and 2D bands both increasing following a line with a slope of 0.75, which is indicated by here, where electron doping shifts uh, also induces a shift in G and 2D peaks, but in a more a complex relation. 
in addition, strain can be also identified and it induces shifts in G and 2D peaks following a line with a slope of 2.2 here. And compressive strain uh, induces shifting toward a higher wave numbers, whereas tensile strain uh, results in a shift of the G and 2D peaks toward lower wave numbers. And the amount of strain that is applied scales with the shift of the 2D peak positions. So, okay, so thank you for bearing with me. So this is the actual data. And to deconvert the interfacial interactions and strain caused by the conformal wrinkling and delivering the coupling, I investigate the Rama spectroscopy of the graphene before and after forming nanostructures. So flat graphene on PDMS without a flow polymer showed a G and 2D peaks located at uh, 1583 and 2670 inverse centimeters, which are close to the values of the undoped graphene. Moreover, the fully half max of the G peak and the Raman intensity ratios were close to the values of the uh, freestanding graphene, which means that the graphene was uh, interacting with the PDMS surface with uh, weak Van der Waals interactions with marginal charge doping. In contrast, if you have the fluoro polymer in between flat graphene and the PDMS, uh, it induces notable shift in G and 2D peak positions toward higher wave numbers, which resulted in a decrease in fluid path max of the G peak and the Raman intensity ratios. And we, in, uh, we attribute this spectral change to the whole doping rather than electron injection or mechanical strain because the G and 2D peak relation follows the uh, trend line that is expected for graphene doped with holes at a constant strain. We attribute this uh, electrostatic interactions involved with the whole doping to the robust adhesion between graphene and the floor polymer during conformal wrinkling process. Uh, and then we investigate the Raman spectroscopy after uh, relieving free strain to compress graphene for both uh, with, that, with and without the floor polymers. So both delaminate buckling and conformal wrinkling uh, shifts G and 2D peak toward the higher wave numbers following a line with the slope of 2.2 which is a trend line expected for uh, graphene under compression at a constant strain. Uh, if we compare the shift, amount of shift for both passes, the conformal wrinkling results in smaller shifts in the 2D peak position compared to the delaminate buckling at all past free strains, which means that the conformal wrinkling was beneficial in reducing strain concentration in graphene. So the advantage of the conformal wrinkling was uh, more obvious when you try to tune the topology of the graphene nanotextures under stretching. So on the left, we see AFM image of the delaminate buckles of graphene without the flow polymer. And this was formed with the uh, uh, relieving 30% free strain. And as we apply tensile strain perpendicular to the feature orientation, the graphene gradually flattened out the delaminate buckle disappear, and upon further strain beyond the free strain amount, the surface exhibited the delaminate buckles with switch orientation, and but with the additional cracks that is formed by the additional uh, tensile strain that apply relative to the free strain amount. Once we release the surface, the delaminate buckles return to this initial orientation but the graphene surface is characterized by more defective compared to the initial state because of the crack for me, uh, because of crack and the delamination that is caused by the stretch to recycle. In contrast, if you have the floor polymer, the graphene forms these conformal wrinkles. And once we stretch the surface, the graphene flattens out to accommodate tensile strain. And at the same time, the system compresses in the transfer direction and form these intermediate structures that looks like a trenches. And then these intermediate structures gradually transform into the wrinkles with switched orientation when you apply further strain. After strain relief from the stress state, the graphene recovered the initial orientation, only slight decrease in wrinkle wavelength and amplitude. And this can be repeated multiple times, up to a thousand times that I tested and by maintaining the wrinkle wavelength and amplitude at both stretch and release states. 
So one of the opportunities that, that I see with this conformal wrinkling strategy is to being able to spatially pattern the physical properties of uh, graphene. So this is the conventional method to engineer or locally pattern the properties where they use the Borges patterns and then uh, chemically functionalize the surface using hydrogenation and lift up the mask. And this typically involves the contamination of graphene because of the mass residue. What he proposed to do is to uh, introduce a uh, graphene with multi-scale wrinkles with uh, different wavelengths. And this approach will allow us to a uh, wider range of flexibility in designing properties because we can uh, post process these graphene wrinkle structures to uh, change the properties. So this is how we pattern the graphene with uh, multi-scale wavelengths. So we have this pre-strain PDMS layer and then mask the surface with the uh, polyvinyl pyrrhodium sacrificial line patterns and then treat the surface with CSF fluid plasma and lift off the PVP to form this pattern floor power layer. And after another round of plasma treatment, we get these two distinct regions of different floor power thicknesses. And then after transfer of the graphene and relieve the strain, we have these two distinct regions of different wrinkle wavelengths. So this is the graphene wrinkles corresponding to the scheme that I just showed you on the previous slide. So region one corresponding to the thinner floor power layer that produces smaller wrinkles, whereas region two has thicker floor power layer that has larger wrinkles. And not notably, the, even at the interface, the graphene was a crack free because conformal adhesion between graphene and the pattern skin layer was remained robust. What we can do further is to add one another cycles of selective floor power deposition which produces uh, four distinct regions of different wavelengths after graphene transfer and strain lift. And we can switch the orientation by stretching the socket and the uh, graphene remains robust. So in summary, we developed a conform wrinkling process that allows tuning of the graphene wrinkle topography under a mechanical strain. And we can tune the local, proper, uh, local structural features of the wrinkles by pairing floral polymer layers with different spatial thicknesses. In future work, I like to design the electronic and optical properties of graphene by pairing, designing the patterns and apply the conform wrinkling approach to engineer a post graphene 2D nanomaterials such as monolayer transition dimetal calculus nodes. So in summary, I'd like to thank Professor Terry Odom for advising me for past four months, four years and eight months and the collaborators and less the Odomus and acknowledge funding sources that enable my research. And thank you all for your attention today. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Well, I have a question from Professor Stephen Carr. What more can you say about the polymeric fluoropolymer layer? Uh, so, two advantages of this material is that it can conformally grow on the surface with very, uh, very high control over the thickness on, on virtually any types of surfaces, such as polystyrene, PDMS, or silicon. And also, the mechanical properties is quite robust, so it's very ductile under tensile strain. Okay. I'll introduce the next speaker, Lin Sun. So Lin Sun is a sixth year PhD student in Professor Chad Merkin's group, and she received her BS degree in engineering science in National University of Singapore. And during her undergrad, she conducted research on electronic properties of complex oxide hair structures under supervision of Professor Ari Ando. Her current research in Professor Chad Merkin's group focuses on building optical materials and devices with DNA programmable assembly. So her work has been multifaceted and often includes the combination of simulation, synthesis, and characterization. And with this, I'll hand it over to Lin Sun for her presentation. Thanks, 